Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're solving equations that have variables on both sides of the equation. We have to remember when we're doing this the property of equality. In other words, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. And to solve an equation, basically what they're talking about when they when any question asks you to solve an equation, it's asking you to get the variable by itself or to isolate the variable. And the way that you do that is to use what we call the inverse operation, or in other words, the opposite operation. So let's go ahead and solve this one just as a quick, um, just a quick reference so that we can take a look at that. When we're asked to solve an equation like this, this is a two-step or multiple-step equation, we would first add 5 to both sides of the equation. We're doing that so that we can get 3x by itself. 19 plus 5 is 24. And now we will divide both sides by 3 so that we get x completely by itself and x is equal to 8. Now, if you need a refresher on how to do that, make sure to check out the lesson on solving multiple step equations. You're going to need to know how to do this to move on for what we're talking about today, which is when you have a variable like y on both sides of the equation. What this requires is that we move the variables to one side of the equation and the numbers to the other. So I'm going to start off doing subtracting 7y from the right side of the equation. That gets rid of my 7y's and move them over to the left side of the equation. 5y minus 7y gives me negative 2y everything else is going to remain the same. So you'll notice all I've done basically is gotten the y's from the, le the right side of the equation over to the right, so over to the left side. Now I'm going to get rid of the numbers. I have 2y plus 3, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. That leaves me with negative 2y on the left and negative 4 on the right. Now I will divide by the coefficient of y. In other words, I'm going to divide by the number in front of y, negative 2. And I divide both sides of the equation by negative 2 for my final solution of y is equal to 2. We can check our work by plugging the value of y equals 2 up here in every place they see the, the letter y. And that would check to see if our solution is correct. All right. Now, a bit of a challenge here, again, with numbers on or variables on both sides of the equation. See if we can solve this one. We're going to get the letters over to the left side. Again, we're subtracting 3n from both sides of our equation. 5n minus 3n leaves us with 2n. Everything else remains the same as it is. And we are removing. 3n minus 3n equals 0. So now on the right side of the equation, we have no n's. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we're going to add 3 to both sides of this equation, because negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. Basically, I'm getting all the numbers out of the left side. So I'm left with 2n is equal to 12. 2 times n the inverse operation of multiplying 2 times n would be divide by 2. 2 divided by 2, they cancel out, and I'm left with n on the left side of the equation. I have to divide the right side of the equation by 2 as well, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So my final answer is that n is equal to 6. Again, you can do a quick check of your work by plugging the value of 6 into the equation everywhere you see the letter n, and you'll see that it is the correct solution. All right, now for our challenge question, one of our challenge questions. What happens when we get a beast of an equation like this, some massive thing? What we're going to do is, first off, we want to get rid of the fraction. We really don't want to have to deal with this fraction. So this whole thing divided by 3, what I can do is multiply the entire side of the equation times 3, and it'll cancel out. I have to remember that I'm multiplying both sides of my equation times 3. That's going to be the challenge. Where most people make the mistake is right here. Now, 
when this is over here, 3 times 5x plus 2, I have to remember my distributive property, that whatever is outside the parentheses get multiplied times each term. So I will end up with 15x plus 6. Again, that's a place where a lot of people make mistakes because they don't multiply this 3 times both terms. Now, I go back over to, that's my left side. I go back over to my right side. We've canceled out the 3's and we're left with 41 plus 8x. Now this looks a lot more like the equations that we've done previously. I'm going to get all my x's onto the left side by subtracting 8x from both sides. 15x minus 8x leaves me with 7x on the left side. Everything else remains the same. And I've removed the 8x from the right side of this equation. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. And that, again, is basically to help me isolate my variable on the left side. 41 minus 6 is 35. I'm going to have to bring this up top here. So I'll just write that out there. 7x is equal to 35. I'm going to divide both sides of that equation by 7. That cancels each other out. And I'm left with x is equal to 35 divided by 7, which is 5. Again, you can check your work here by going back to the original equation. Substitute the value of 5 in there. And you'll see that that is the correct solution. So this one here, definitely more of a challenge of isolating our variables when we have variables on both sides of the equation and inside of fractions. All right, makes it a little bit more challenging. And one more challenge question here. It's going to work very similar to what we did before. So here, let's go ahead and solve this one. I'm going to start by getting rid of my fraction. I do that by multiplying both sides of this equation times 4. The 4's will cancel out over here, leaving us with 2 times 34 plus 10b. All right. And over on the left side, I'm going to multiply 4 times 7b, which will give me 28b and 4 times negative 1, which gives me negative 4. So now I'm ready to move on and deal with the parentheses that I have here that obviously we have to get rid of. So I'm going to do that using, I can do this in one of two ways, I should say. I can multiply 2 times each term inside there and then solve like normal. Or in this case, I can realize that 2 times all of that is the same thing I can get rid of that by dividing both sides by 2. All right? So I'm going to do this. And the reason I can do that is because I can see here that both terms are divisible by 2. If they weren't both divisible by 2, I couldn't do this. So this is just actually a shortcut. Um, so if you can see that that's a shortcut, those would cancel out. And then this 2, I would divide both terms by 2. So I would end up with 14 and 2. All right. Now, for those of you who aren't comfortable with that, if you like that solution, you like that little quick shortcut, go ahead and use that. For those of you who are not quite as comfortable with equations yet, that's OK. We can go ahead and use our distributive property and solve in this way. 2 times, well, first off, everything on my left side is going to remain exactly the same. So I'll just go ahead and write that. 2 times 34 will give me 68. And 2 times 10 is 20b. All right? So again, if you feel more comfortable using the distributive property and solving like this, you'll get exactly the same answer. All right? Just that you're dealing with bigger numbers now. I'm going to get rid of 20b from both sides of this equation. Minus 20b leaves me with 8b on the left, minus 4 equal to 68. And notice I got rid of my b's. That's the whole point of this, is to get the b's onto one side of the equation. Now I'm going to move the numbers by adding 4 to both sides. I get rid of the numbers from the left side, and I'm left with 8b is equal to 72. I'll bring that up here. 8b is equal to 72. 
I'll divide both sides by 8. For my final answer, that'll cancel out. 72 divided by 8 is 9. So this one here had a lot of steps to it. But again, each step, all in order, solved correctly, will give us the final answer. We can go back and substitute into the original equation, but honestly, that original equation is a bit of a mess. So I would personally be pretty happy if I got down to a nice round number for my solution. All right, if I were in a testing situation, it was really important, I might plug it back in just to make sure that it was right. Okay, But this is the steps that you could follow. And if we had um, divided by 2 at this point, we would have gotten the same solution, maybe a little quicker, but I didn't want to add any confusion for you know, adding fractions in when we didn't need to. All right. So there is how to solve an equation when you have variables on both sides of the equal sign.